protocols and services. So um, border protection is the first, right, border control, and then the next is enforce immigration laws and So if this was A, this would be B. Right? Um, first, border control to protect ourselves from dangerous people. Another way that we protect ourselves from dangerous people is enforcing immigration laws and services. Um, and I'm going to read. Um, I'm going to read the section. The National Security Investigation Division (NI) NSID National Security Investigation Division. Right? The National Security Investigations Division National Security Unit oversees U.S. immigration and customs enforcement. Participation with the Joint Terrorism Task Force, which I spent quite a bit of time talking about already. The Joint Terrorism Task Force investigates, detects, um, um, incidents, prosecutes, and removes terrorists and dismantles terrorist organizations. The ICE is involved in almost every foreign um, terrorism investigation related to cross-border crime. Foreign terrorists need money. And this is an important thing. Foreign terrorists need, mon um, need to move money, weapons, and people across international borders to conduct their operations. The ICE holds a unique set of law enforcement tools for um, disrupting these illicit activities. So we can see that the relationship between the National Security Investigations Division and the JTTF, the Joint Terrorism Task Force, is, is an intimate relationship. As we said before in the architecture of intelligence, we, the average citizens, aren't fully privy um, to the, the true nature of the intelligence community and the relationship that they have. But as we saw in that example, foreign terrorists need money to move weapons and people across international borders to conduct their operations. And this is why um, um, the JTTF investigates with the ICE um, um, their involvement in uh, terrorist investigations. Right? So we need to enforce immigration laws and services, and insofar as we make this enforcement um, and the JTTF is able to investigate, well obviously they'll be able to arrest, deport, detain, interrogate, blah blah blah, right? these potential dangerous people. Um, I've included a link to a video, I think the video link comes directly from, I want to say it's either the ICE or the JTTF, I'm not really sure, I don't remember, um, but I enforce Enforce enforcement of uh, removal operations. So it's the this is another part subset on under here. Enforcement and removal operations. E R O. Right. Enforcement and removal operations. Um, so in protecting ourselves from dangerous people, which is the first overarching strategy for a uh, 21st century. Um, protection of the United States population. Um, we're going to implement border control and enforce immigration laws and services in um, uh, um, an interdepartmental coordination, right, between the JTTF, the NSU, the, um, the NSID, and so on, right, so that probable targets, potential threats, individuals are detained, removed, uh, and so on. Um, Again, emphasis on external threat, huge emphasis on external threat, both border control and the enforcement of um, uh, immigration laws. Assumes that the threat, the terrorist threat, is an international threat. With respect to d domestic threats, my, my analysis at this level is that there needs to be requisite policies in place in this overarching strategic uh, approach by the Department of Homeland Security to make sure that we minimize the role of um, sort of lone wolves and, and domestic threats, right? That's equally as important, if 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 not uh, if not um, more important, because they they the potential threats are already here. Okay, and then lastly, I'm not going to get into any serious discussion on this. C. I'll just put it at the very bottom. Um, strengthen screening and travel of workers, right? Um, Screening, uh, strength of screening of travelers and workers. Screen travelers and workers. All right. So screening travelers and workers, right? Assuming that workers, obviously, here um, uh, 
um, visa, United States citizens, United States resident aliens. Um, there has to be a screening, a very thorough screening of individuals that are working within the United States. Um, so, as we can see, the overarching, and that would conclude this first section of protecting ourselves from dangerous people. So the first initiative from the Department of Homeland Security is to strategically protect ourselves from dangerous people. How are we going to go about protecting ourselves from danger? How is our government going to go about protecting ourselves from dangerous people? One, we're going to control our borders. Borders. Two, we're going to enforce immigration laws. And three, we're going to screen um, travelers and workers. And this is how we go about that level of protection. So very solid, very linear, very easy to understand. The only critique that I have, um, I, I think a little top heavy, a little bit personally, my assessment is that a little bit too much emphasis on international threat and not so much emphasis on domestic threat. And I think this strategic goal needs to be augmented a bit to incorporate um, the reality of domestic threats. So that's just my, my two cents. All right, so that's the first strategic um, objective. And now we'll look at the second one. So number two. The second is protecting our nation from dangerous goods, right? We want to protect ourselves, our nation from dangerous people, but we also want to protect our nation from dangerous goods. So protect our nation from We want to um, protect ourselves from dangerous goods. Dangerous people first, dangerous goods second. Um, we want to prevent and detect radiological, I'm going to just sort of put all of this in one category, prevent ourselves from and be able to detect radiological, um, nuclear, biological, chemical, explosive attacks. Right? Um, it's important to recognize how we go about that protection. What I've done in this first bullet point when we talk about um, radiological, radiological, nuclear, biological, uh, chemical, and explosive, um, I've created a hyperlink. Click that link. That link will take you to a PDF um, so that you can, you can better inform yourself, better educate yourself as to how we go about preparing and protecting ourselves from any of these forms of attacks. It's at this point that I want to make sure that we understand collectively, especially those in the United States of America that are watching the video, that this is where we as citizens, as individuals who aren't part of the government, can prepare ourselves. Where right now our government, um, the, and I'll get to this in a little bit, um, policies were just signed uh, a couple days ago. Um, not too long ago at all, I think it was like March 30th, were signed and 180 days were given in order for our um, government to be able to properly articulate what preparation means, and I'll talk about preparedness in a little bit. We as um, a citizenry need to be able to prepare ourselves. We have to create a culture of preparedness. It's important to recognize that to talk about preparedness is not to talk about fear. Right? The big scary thing is when you hear radiological, nuclear, biological, chemical, explosive, you immediately want to get fearful, right? right? You immediately want to say, oh my goodness, this is, this is a terrible thing, right? You, you know, in a sense, this is what terrorists want you to be. The whole point of terrorism activity is to um, exacerbate fear, to create an environment, to encourage fear and terror. The, what we want to say is that um, preparedness isn't the same as fear, right? So when we're talking about... Right? When we're talking about preparedness, preparedness doesn't equal fear, right? Preparedness is cautionary. We want to take caution, right? It's not to say if we're prepared, we're fearful. So I remember as a little kid, I grew up in the, uh, in the 80s. Um, 80s was a wonderful time. I've done videos on, already on my YouTube channel for International War. Um, and I discussed one of the movies, uh, um, War, I forget the name, I think it's called War Games. I forget the name of the movie. I remember the code, though, the launch code. Um, so there's, there's this big threat between the United States of America and the Soviet Union. And I remember being a kid, I actually remember being a kid, and they were like, in case there's a 